Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today, we're gonna be talking about one of my favorite shows ever. One of the most cheesy shows that I love. And it's called Gilmore Girls. If you guys know about that show, that show came out in the early thousands. And it kind of grew up with me. I've watched this show on repeat since I was like 14. And I've come all the way from watching it on WB56 to ABC Family and now I just binge it every single year. It's, it's one of my comfort shows, you know? It's about realistic people with real problems and they often solve their problems by making more problems for themselves. And it's just, it's very relatable because, yeah, we don't even need to talk about me personally because all I do is create more problems for myself. But we're not talking about me today. We're talking about Rory Gilmore. She's one of the protagonists and also one of the most hated people in the fandom, unfortunately. So Rory is the only daughter of Lorelai Gilmore, someone who throughout the show is placed on this pedestal of being the golden child. She's smart, she's beautiful, and she has so much going for her. Or so the show wants you to think. In the beginning, she really does seem like she's destined for greatness, so ambitious and ready to take on the world, right? But we begin to see that despite all the legwork the praise of others seems to be doing for her, Rory really isn't the person the show wants you to believe that she is. In reality, Rory is an entitled, bratty, and arrogant person whose life has actually suffered from being placed on such a high pedestal by everyone around her. It's given her such an inflated sense of self that she actually falls apart the second that she's challenged by someone that she respects. But this one topic, her personality traits, it's not the topic that we're sticking to today. The one thing that I wanna talk about is I wanted to revisit a moment that actually changed Rory for the worst. And it was a cementing moment for her where she finally decides to stop acting like she's the, the perfect, do no wrong person that everyone swears that she is. From this moment on, she never changes the patterns that caused this one mistake. And it shows up in the revival where Rory is now an adult woman still making the same mistakes. The moment that I'm talking about is that moment in season five where she loses her virginity to Dean. Hey, what's going on? Dean came over to borrow something. Yeah. <clears throat> in this scene, Lorelai catches Dean and Rory in a very compromising position. Thankfully, they were afforded enough time to get out of bed and get dressed because Lorelai loves the sound of her own voice, so she spends that entire first moment just talking to herself in the house, walking around, assuming that Rory is running the errand that she said she was running. Sadly, they weren't quick enough to avoid detection. When Dean leaves the house, Lorelai lays into Rory about how wrong it is to sleep with a married man. But he's married. You don't understand the situation. Is he still married? Yes, but then I understand the situation. Rory and Lorelai proceed to argue about this, but she never concedes to this point. She asks Lorelai, isn't she glad that it was with someone who loves her? By it, she means her first time. And she goes on to explain that there's nothing wrong with what she did with Dean. And it's fine because what she and Dean have precedes Lindsay, Dean's wife. Dean is leaving her, she says. She's, she's so sure. But this is where her entitlement really shows. He was mine first, she says. She begs Lorelai to see reason. This is her Dean they're talking about. And for this moment, Lorelai is a mother to Rory. She doesn't back down on this at all. She tells her that she is now the other woman. And how does Rory react? Well, obviously you weren't ready for this step. The very fact that you chose another girl's guy to sleep with proves that. He was my boyfriend first. But you dumped him. You rejected him. You picked someone else. Stop it. Rory? I hate you for ruining this for me. 
This continues through season five, where this rift is caused between mother and daughter because Rory wants what Rory wants, and everyone else just doesn't get it. The fact that her mom disagrees with her just shatters her worldview. It's rare that her mom doesn't back her up in this one, this one instance, but Lorelai is trying to teach Rory a lesson here. One that Rory clearly throws back in her face for trying to teach her. I didn't raise you to be like this. I didn't raise you to be the kind of girl who sleeps with someone else's husband. You slept with dad when he was with Sherry. He wasn't married to Sherry. He was engaged and she was pregnant. So this is all my fault? I set one crappy example for you and you have no choice but to follow in my footsteps? Rory, what are you gonna do now? She mentions her mom's relationship with her father as a way to call her a hypocrite which shows how she perceived her own mother as that relationship was unraveling. Perhaps this is a reason for the way she proceeds through her dating life, never acknowledging the innocent third party, which is definitely a conversation that they should have, but unfortunately, there's no room to have it because Rory's sole focus is to be argumentative about this point so that she can get the focus off of her fuck-ups. Instead of facing the situation head-on, what does Rory do? She runs the opposite direction and refuses to see where she went wrong here. So what does Lorelai do then? Well, her grandma, actually her mother, Rory's grandma, comes to visit the inn and says, hey, I wanna go to Europe for the summer. Does anyone wanna go with me? Well, <laughs> Lorelai jumps at this opportunity to get Rory the fuck out of the country just for the summer so she can gather her thoughts. But of course, Rory is looking at this as a punishment. Europe. Cool. What? So what is this, a Henry James novel? The young lady acts up and her family ships her off to Europe? Oh, come on. How fast did you tell Grandma that I had nothing to do this summer? I'm not shipping you off. Oh, please. I'm not. I'm just... Okay. I, I, maybe I am. Ha! Huh. I wasn't planning on it, but maybe somewhere in the back of my mind I just thought... Say goodbye to Daisy Miller. Okay, fine. So maybe I suggested the trip to give you some time to... Travel back to the turn of the century? To think. But you did not have to accept. I did too! No, Rory, you didn't. You're 19 now, remember? You're all grown up and you can handle your own affairs. Sorry, that's a bad choice of words. You can um, handle your own life events. So if you didn't want to go to Europe, all you had to do was say you didn't want to go, but you didn't. So I assume you do want to go. Only after the trip to Europe with her grandma does Rory finally see what, what's going on and that she's been wrong the entire time. This is when she calls her mom to apologize. Mom. Yeah. I'm sorry. It's okay. I screwed up. I screwed up so bad. I handled everything wrong. Oh, honey. I keep reliving everything over and over. It's such a mess. I, I just want to fix it. I have to fix it. You will. But the thing is, she also asks for a favor from her mom. She asks her to deliver a letter that she wrote to Dean that literally only makes matters worse for everybody involved. The letter is it's found by Lindsay in her husband's jacket and thus the fight heard around Stars Hollow is born. Yeah. I hate you, Dean. I hate everything. Let's just talk. I don't want to talk. I don't want you here. I'm sorry, okay? Yes, oh my god. Get out. Oh my god. You got my. Don't can you not? Dare. Well, that's what happens when you get married too young. I'm sorry. There's not much I can do. I'm yeah, that I'm must sorry. be it. By the time Rory gets home, word round town is that Dean has been tossed out of his own home by his wife, who found out he was cheating. He's forced to move back in with his parents due to both of their poor choices. Shortly after hearing about this, Rory and Lorelai go for a walk around the town and they run into none other than Lindsay and her mom in the town square. This was not supposed to happen. You, you should be ashamed of yourself, what you did. Just wait. What did she ever do to you? Huh? How did she hurt you? Why are you doing this? Teresa, please calm down. Calm down? My little girl has to come home and find your heinous letter in Dean's jacket. Look, we're in the street. You little monster. Hey, 
Pull back, lady. There aren't hundreds of other boys in the world. You have to go after her husband. Okay, stop attacking my daughter right now. You're upset. I get it, but you do not do this. She slept with my son-in-law. She broke up a marriage. Are you proud? She did not break up a marriage. What do you know of this? Enough. I know Rory. Well, all I know is that now my Lindsay is devastated. Dean is back with his parents. Lives are destroyed, and you and your daughter can go to hell. Okay, I have got to know what was in that letter. Um, I, I told him that that night was special and that I wasn't sorry that it happened, but he's married and he has to figure out his life. So I was going to make it easier for him and take myself out of the mix. Well, that was a very good letter. I can't believe she found it. Despite being very adamant about how wrong it is to see Dean while married, Lorelai defends her daughter against the onslaught of insults brought upon by Lindsay's mom, who is visibly angry. In my opinion, Lorelai was just doing what any mother would do in this situation, defending against any outside threats, regardless of how she may feel about the situation. But what was said after is what really made me upset about their relationship here. And it's when Lorelai asks Rory what was in the letter. Lorelai doesn't seem to think that there was anything wrong with what was in the letter. I disagree. To me, this letter was extremely short-sighted of Rory, and saying that she doesn't regret what happened in that letter is such a problematic mindset for her to have. In her eyes, there was no mistake made here. She feels no remorse about it because to her, it was special. Never mind the person being hurt in the crossfire, it's just about Rory and the cloud that she's on. Once you realize that there's a whole person being disregarded here, it kind of shows how douchey Rory is. She doesn't care at all about the lives affected by their stupid decisions. And it comes to a head when Dean goes off on her. Are you okay? Am I okay? Yeah, I mean, how do you feel? I'm sorry, that's a stupid question. No, it's not a stupid question. Um. Let's see, how do I feel? Actually, I feel like an idiot. Why? Why? Because I was married, Rory. Married. And I threw it all away for someone who dumped me once and then just bailed on me. I didn't just bail on you. I hurt everybody. I hurt Lindsay, I hurt her parents, I hurt my parents. And now I'm back at home and you're in Europe with your grandmother and... And what the hell was I thinking? I mean, what am I doing? What's wrong with me? He takes out all of the frustration on her for making the terrible choices that he made with her. He regrets ruining his marriage. He regrets giving the girl who let him go a chance, especially when he was already in a relationship, a marriage. But you know, me personally, I don't feel the least bit sorry for Dean here. He willingly made this choice. He's just mad that his letter was seen and that he was caught. At some point later on, Dean and Rory continue their relationship after Lindsay and Dean finish their marriage. At some point, he gets very angry at Rory when she asks him, hey, would you like to go to an event in the town square tomorrow? And he's like, I literally just broke up with Lindsay. I don't want to parade our relationship around the town. That's fucked up. And the way that he lashes out at her, it just, it reeks of, I'm upset that I fucked this up, but I'm going to take it out on you. You know, Lane's band is playing at Jackson's Rally, and I thought maybe I'd come back to town to see it. Maybe we could go together. I don't think so. Oh, come on. It would be fun. At the very least, it could be loud. No, Rory. I don't want to go parading our relationship all over town. I didn't say- I don't need to rub Lindsay's nose in it any more than I already have, okay? I wasn't trying to rub Lindsay's nose in anything. I was just- 
And that's where my love for Dean died. But that's beside the point. My point here is to point out a pattern that Rory continues to deal with throughout her life. And eventually she gets with Logan and he gives her a little taste of what it's like to be cheated on. Because in the past, she was always the one doing the cheating. But it's different a little bit down the line when she goes to college and her view of what relationships were, it completely changes because she starts to get into casual dating. And that is something that Rory, the serial monogamist, would never do. But it also puts her in the crossfire of dealing with someone like Logan, who has never been in a committed relationship and is inevitably gonna fuck up when it comes down to rules and boundaries and what a breakup actually is. I can't believe it. You didn't just cheat on me. You really cheated on me. I didn't cheat on you. Oh, so you didn't sleep with No, I did, but we were broken up. No, you were broken up. Not me, I thought we were just taking some time. At some point, Rory finds out that Logan took it upon himself to assume that after a fight they have had, they had broken up, but they had only broken up on his end. He didn't understand what an actual breakup looks like. And this causes him to go on a sex bender and pretty much cheat on Rory with every member of his sister's bridal party. What I find interesting about Rory after this point is that not only does she decide to forgive Logan for what happened, she doesn't forget and just becomes very passive aggressive with him in their relationship, not having actually forgiven him for what he did. And I'm not sure if this is where Rory starts to just let go of her expectations when it comes to monogamous relationships because after the entirety of the gilmore girls series we come back with the revival and it turns out that 15 10 years after the events of the original show rory is still doing the same shit that she was doing before she has a boyfriend named paul who is extremely forgettable and they make it a point throughout the show to keep showing you how forgettable he is because everyone forgets that he's there. And throughout this relationship, Rory is having an affair with Logan the entire time. What's it say? Paul dinner, don't forget. Oh, crap. That's a lot of exclamation points. I forgot. There's all the excitement about my pants, right? Not only is she having an affair, Logan is also having an affair because he's engaged to be married. Now, Rory clearly doesn't give a shit about either of the parties in this situation. She doesn't care about Logan's fiance, and she doesn't care about the boyfriend that she has that she brought home to meet her parents for Christmas. So Rory is just being a shitty person because that is who she is. Not once did she stop and think, hey, maybe I should go date somebody who isn't in a relationship. No, we see her have these, okay, I'll admit, they're very cute moments in the revival, okay? I love Logan and Rory together. What would you do if I sang out of tune? Would you stand up and walk out on me? What ruined their scenes together for me was the knowledge that they both have partners and they're choosing to cheat on their partners by being there with each other. And this is a thing that they do every few months. They just go out on town, book a hotel, cheat on their partners. And I'm just gonna say it, the eyes that Jess was giving her the entire revival she doesn't deserve. Even Jess puts her on this pedestal of being this amazing person, even though her actions don't exactly prove that. To everyone, she will always be Rory. 
but to the audience, she stopped being Rory after she kissed Jess while still being with Dean. But that's just my two cents. I hope you liked this video essay. It took me a while to get my thoughts in order, so I'm sorry if it sounds all mixed up in there, but yeah, I'm gonna try to be doing a little more of, you know, content like this about shows that I love, so stay tuned. There's more to come. See you next time. Bye!